Welcome to the final chapter of the series on Oracle Forms Developer. And this chapter is on Forms Menus, and this is how we tie in all the forms into a single application. And the menu modules can also launch Oracle Reports, Oracle Graphics, etc. Actually, they can even launch um, non-Oracle programs. So there are basically two things that we're going to cover today. Menu modules, how to create them, and what are the different items in the menu. And then we're briefly going to go over menu security. Uh, menu security is, is a rather um, complex routine. And, and you, what you're going to do is, in the lab, you'll go through all the steps, because there's some database objects that you need to create. So uh, we'll just give you an overview here. So menus are a list of items that the end user uses to select specific functions or operations. And each item on a menu represents a command or a submenu. So the menu, um, you're very familiar with menus from having run applications, uh, all of Microsoft Word, Excel, any kind of Internet Explorer, Netscape Navigator. All of these have menus across the top that you're used to. And um, it's slightly different when it comes to forms, but it, it's very much the same principle. So the menu is a module which is contained in a single file. Um, and the source file, what you work with in Builder, is an MMB file. And then the runtime file, which is when you execute it, is an MMX. This is a little more difficult because the menu attaches itself to the form, and the form has it as a main menu. So as you're working through the form, uh, sorry, as you're working through the menu in the menu editor, you're not going to be able to just press the Run button and see how it looks. You've got to attach it to a form, and then you have to run that form, and that form is calling the menu. And it's only going to be able to, to call a compiled menu, an MMX. So there are three different types of menu objects. And each menu module contains one or more menus. And this includes a main menu, an individual menu, and submenus. And then each menu contains one or more menu items. And the menu items are the only ones that are associated with an actual command. Now, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you a little demonstration here of all the different pieces of the menu. And I'm going to go over it again so it's clear. Now, the reason that it's important to understand what these are is because when you go back into the Object Navigator, when you look at some of these you know, properties, you're going to want, it's going to have to be clear to you what are the different things. So we have the main menu, which goes across on the top. And that's your main menu module. Action, edit, query, block, record, field, window, help. These are all the different items. Um, these are all the components of the main menu. And what kind of components are they? are actually individual menus. So that what I've expanded here is the query menu. And the query menu is a component of the main menu. Then when you look at the individual menu, the individual query menu, it also has menu items. Now these are the items which have the commands which launch You know what it is that you want to launch with the menu. And um, each of these individual menus can actually keep cascading down into submenus if you want. Depending on how complex your application is, you may have to do that. Uh, I worked on one application where we actually had 300 reports that we launched from a menu. So we grouped those into different types because you know the different users only have to see the uh, um, select from one list. Instead of scrolling down 300, they're kind of subgrouped. So then we kind of had cascading submenus in each individual menu. OK, so there are a number of different menu item types. The reason this is important is you know, when you, when you select the individual menu item, you're going to have to assign it a menu type. And so we're gonna, I'm going to explain what the differences are here. A plain menu item type, that's where your, most of your menu item types are going to be. And that's really just uh, generally launching a command or which would be opening a form, running a report, et cetera. A checked is something that you turn on and off. Um, and it's kind of a Boolean yes or no. So when it's 
Uh, yes, it's got a check. If it's off, it's gone. A radio would be a group of items. Um, a good example for this, not in a forms application, but you would have like a, a word processor it may have three or four different ways of viewing the document. So that's kind of that's a group, and that's why um, it would have a radio button, like a little uh, dot next to whichever one you had selected, and you can only select one from the group. So when you create um, a radio group, you can only choose one, and you have to assign a radio group to all of them. Now, a separator is the uh, like the line that separates from one group of items, you know, to the next, and that doesn't have any function in terms of it doesn't launch a command. It just separates them. And then magic items, um, those are like um, commands which work across applications in Windows, such as copy, paste, etc. We'll go over that in more detail. Now, each item on the, uh, the menu will have a number of properties. And what I always say is it's better to work in the menu editor, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, and, when, and then go in there to select on the different items, and your property palette will be corresponding to which item you have there. And what you'll see is <clears throat> you have a menu item command property there. And basically, it can be null if it's a separator. It can be menu if it's like calling a submenu, or PL SQL, which is usually the default, which would be if it's executing a PL SQL command. Now, here we can just see a few of those. Um, I've only included the main item types, which would be plain and separator. Uh, to be honest, in forms, you're probably not going to use the radio or the check very often. Now, here's a list of all the magic items. About, uh, copy, clear, cut, paste, quit, window. The copy, cut, paste, those probably are the ones that you're going to use the most. And magic items are something that you can create quickly because they create menu items for standard functions that are available across all GUI applications. And these are defined in the property palette. And you don't have to write any code for that. Once you've assigned it to be a magic item, you just choose which magic item it is, and it's done. And you just have to make sure that you don't have command item type set to PL SQL, because that's the default. And so those are the properties that you would set in the property palette. Now remember that you will be, um, you'll be doing this uh, in the lab so that you'll, you'll get a much clearer sense of how this is done. So here's a list of, of a number of magic items, like under an edit command, copy, cut, paste. And you can see that the magic item will be given its uh, hotkey, like Control-V for paste. Uh, it'll automatically come up there. And here's some sample code for command line execution. Um, a call form, open form, just what you've been used to. You can use all of the call um, programs that we learned for reports. And then if you want to execute um, a host command, it would have to be anything which you could type in a DOS prompt or when you go start run, anything that you could write in there and that would work, you just surround that in quotes. Now what I've even done is if I have a more complicated scenario of maybe even a, um, a procedure that I have to execute, you know, you can, you can actually have that a variable which is dependent on some other things which are built up uh, through your code. So here is a picture of the menu editor. Now the menu editor is where you're going to work to create the different menus and the different menu items. So it's a, basically just a GUI tool to edit the menu. And I highly advise that you keep yourself there because the object navigator, the way that it represents the different menus is not necessarily intuitive. So you have to be very careful uh, when creating new items that you're creating them in the right place. So what I would always generally do is go into the, the main menu module and launch the menu editor. It's actually a right click. You can do that off the object navigator. 
and then go into the menu editor. And you'll see in the demo, and then you'll work through it on your own, that there are a number of different buttons. It's very easy to, to create one object and then another object there. So this is just to give you a, a feel of how you would see these in the object navigator. You would have the main menu, and then um, that menu has its sub-menu. So the main menu has like uh, the main menu module here is called menu one. It has a number of different sub-menus, file, action, students. And then the reason I say this is counterintuitive is personally I would expect the file menu to be underneath file under menu one, but it's not. It's got its own node. So that's why it's a little confusing to work in the object navigator, and I wouldn't advise um, creating things there. I would create your items in the menu editor. So just to emphasize that again, that's uh, every time I, I usually teach, I teach this class at Columbia. I repeat this three or four times, and then we have a lab, and about half the students wind up creating items uh, on the object navigator, and they get lost, and they wind up having to delete the whole thing and start again. So I can't say this enough. Always add menu items to your menu in the menu editor to be sure you're giving the new menu item the correct location. Because the menu locations in the object navigator are very difficult to ascertain. They're counterintuitive. OK, now there are a number of things that are important in order to be able to launch your, your, uh, your form with the menu module. Your form and your menu module must be stored in directories listed in your Form 60 path registry entry. Uh, sometimes you also have an Oracle path. Um, if you're in a situation where you're working in an office where they don't allow you to edit your registry, there is another workaround to that. And what you could do is create a shortcut on your desktop. What you do here is all the files have to be stored in the same directory. And this directory, it can be in your path, but it doesn't have to be in your path. It can be really anywhere on the network. And so all the forms, executables, the FMXs, the menus, which are the MMXs, any of the report modules, the REPs, um, all of these should be in the same place, including the icons as well, just to be sure. And then what would happen is you create that shortcut, and then you just make sure that the starting directory points to that directory. And then it's kind of like a path local to that shortcut. And uh, we'll have some additional information that's also on the CD, which uh, explains step by step how to create that. And in order to use a menu module, you must first attach it to the form module. So the form has a menu module property, and that's where you put the name of the menu. Also, that's very important, you must compile your menu module after you make changes. And the thing is, when you compile it, there's nothing that you see but on the bottom left-hand corner of the form builder, a very small uh, message that says that it was compiled successfully. Uh, but you highlight the menu module or any component in the object navigator, press Control T. You can also go to a, under Administration Compile, and that will actually create an MMX file. It is only the MMX file which can be used by the form for that report. Now, there's a whole other um, option that you have and under, I'm calling menu security. And this is, there's a whole series of objects that you need to create on the database. And you have to be familiar with roles and that kind of thing. And once you have set that up, then you will see that on the menu, you have an item role property. And what you can do is you can give access to different items individual menu items based on the database role. Um, now, there's an exercise. The last exercise in the book goes through this step by step. Now, you have to be able to have the rights to create uh, roles and to do a number of things to assign the roles to users. So that's only something you could do when, you know, if you really have rights to the system or the main DBA user of the database. So the next demo, which is the last demo of the book, you will create a menu and menu items using the menu layout editor. 
continue with the assignments, go through and read everything and work through all the, uh, the labs. You'll go through the security lab and you will have completed this book. And I'm confident that after you have done all the material here that you can create uh, an intermediate form application. Uh, you have all uh, the knowledge that you need from having done this. Now, forms, applications can really do almost anything. There's an infinite um, possible number of things you can implement on the form. There are a number of other books that you can go to. Uh, another thing which is very helpful is that when you install forms, there's also a demo application, and that involves a lot of advanced topics there. So by now, you've completed you know everything here. You can actually start to um, look at those on your own. And I think you, you have enough material um, behind you that you can really just go through that, go through the help menu, and you'd be able to figure out what's going on in some of those advanced demos. And good luck to you. I wish you the best. And um, maybe one day you can teach me some of the advanced things that, that you've learned in creating your applications. Thank you.